Okay, so question three is going to ask you to find the domain. So parts A, B, and C here, we've got some three different variations. You want to make sure you know how to do all three of those. Here's the first one. So for A, we have a square root that's in the denominator. So remember, domain is talking about all the numbers that make a function defined. In other words, all numbers that don't end up in division by zero or square root of a negative number. So we want to make sure we put in what numbers are allowed in here to where I will not get an error on my calculator essentially is what that's saying. So if I got a uh, square root in the bottom there, that means that there's two possibilities. I could end up dividing by zero and I could end up with a square root of a negative number. So if you have a square root on the bottom of your uh, fraction, what we're going to say is the only numbers that were allowed here are going to be positive numbers. So I'm going to put a greater than zero there because that's the only numbers I'm allowed to have inside the square root. Now the reason why I'm not putting a greater than or equal symbol there is because if I had the equal symbol that means then it's a possibility of me dividing by zero. So if I set up this equation here that takes care of both of them at the same time. I'm not having division by zero and I'm ensuring that I solve this and get values for x that will make the uh, expression underneath the square root positive. Okay, so we're going to add 3 to both sides, so 7x is greater than 3, we're going to divide both sides by 7, and we get x is greater than 3 7 It does say to write your answer in terms of interval notation, so we want to make sure you know how to do that. Uh, because there's no equal sign underneath, we're going to use a parenthesis, and we put 3 7 there, and that's going to go to infinity, and so that would be what numbers are allowed. So as long as I pick numbers between 3 sevenths and infinity, I'll guarantee that I'm not going to divide by zero or uh, have a square root of a negative number. Now what you might be thinking also is what do we do with the top part? Okay, well, now the top part, there is no restrictions at all for the top. It's, a, it's an absolute value, but no matter what I put in there for x, that's not going to make any difference. So in, in most cases for the problems that you're doing here, uh, you're just going to, you're looking for only where where a square root is or dividing by zero. So on top, we don't have division by zero. We don't have a square root. Therefore, any number is allowed on top. So we only had to consider the denominator in this case. For three b, we also have a square root, but the square root notice this time is not on the bottom of the fraction. Since the square root is on top. Now zero is allowed because we just can't divide by zero, but if we have zero over a number, that's okay. We'll just get zero for our answer. So we're going to do 3 minus 4x, and we're going to set that to be greater than or equal to zero. Again, zero is allowed this time because you have a square root on the, on the top. So the question is, well, what about the bottom? Okay, well, the bottom, that's never going to be able to be equal to zero because we just have a number down below. The only time we ever have to deal with that is if there's a variable down below. Since there's no x down there, we don't need to deal with it. So the, the part we have down below, that's never going to be zero. Therefore, we don't have to worry about that. The only thing we have to worry about is the top part. So the top part, you have to have positive numbers only inside the square root, but this time we are going to include the zero because zero divided by 30 is defined, but if I had a number divided by zero, then that is not allowed. So in this case, since it's on top, we're including the zero. Let's solve this. We're going to subtract the three from both sides, and we get this. We're going to divide both sides by negative four. Now when I do that, Whenever you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative, the sign is going to switch directions. So remember on this particular question, since we're dividing by negative 4, we have to flip the inequality and we get positive 3 fourths. But we get x is less than or equal to 3 fourths. So because it's less than, that means that we're going to go down towards negative infinity. So for interval notation, you're going to go negative infinity. And we're going to go up to 3 fourths, but the 3 fourths now, because we got the equal sign, that's going to now be included. So we're going to use a bracket on that one. And this would be your uh, correct answer in interval notation. Okay, for part C, for finding the domain, we don't have any square roots to deal with this time. We do have something on the bottom that's a possibility of it equaling 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the bottom equal to 0, and whatever values that we find, we're not going to include those in our domain. Because remember, domain, you can't include any numbers that cause division by zero. So let's take the bottom one. So 
we have uh, something that we can factor. And we're going to set that 1 equal to 0. We're going to factor it. And then we'll find the values for x that we'll not be allowed to put in here uh, for domain. Okay, so we're going to look for factors of 6 that add up to negative 5. We're going to use 2 and 3 in this case to make both of them negative. We can't use 6 and 1 because the last number is positive, which means that both these signs would have to be negative. We're going to set each individual one equal to 0. And that's going to give us 2 and 3. So 2 and 3 are our, our answers. These are the ones that are not allowed. So now the question becomes, how do we write interval notation to not include these? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to write the interval from negative infinity up to 2 in between these two numbers and then after the 3. So we're going to have actually three different intervals that we're going to connect together. So first, let's go from negative infinity to 2. So all the numbers before 2. We're going to use a u for union. Because union means it can be in either one of these, this one or this one or whatever other one that we have. So we're going to use a union to connect that. Then we're going to use all the numbers between 2 and 3. And then all the numbers after 3. So we're including all the numbers. Basically what this is saying, we're include all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, but we're not going to include uh, 2 and 3. We have to use parentheses on all these because we don't want to include the number. So uh, in this case, again, you got a 5x on top, but that can be anything, so we're not concerned about that. We're only concerned about the bottom. We're looking for numbers that would cause division by 0. That was 2 and 3. Therefore, these are not included on your domain.